Hello, my name is Doug Wilson. I'm the Director of Security here at Uptix. Today we're here to talk about how OS Query can be used for some basic administration tasks on Mac OS. A lot of these tasks will transfer over to Linux and or even some possibly to Windows, but I'm using Macintosh OS because that's what my current desktop operating system is. Um, the goal of this demo is to show you how versatile OS Query is and also get you thinking about some of the ways that you could use OS Query to solve some of your own administrative needs. First off, I'm going to launch OS Query in interactive mode using OS Query I. Now that we've got OS Query up, I'm going to be typing in a bunch of commands and going through them. Remember, even though I'm doing this only on one machine, everything you see here could be done at scale across your entire enterprise with a distributed OS Query solution such as Uptix. I'm going to start today by reminding you of the help command in the OS Query shell. This is achieved by uh, typing a period followed by the letters H-E-L-P. This lists out the other shell commands that are available in OS Query. Initially, right now, we're concerned with the mode command, which basically displays how your results are printed out on the screen. Um, most of the time, you're using mode pretty, uh, which formulates things uh, in the format of a normal SQL table. and tries to basically make this as quote unquote pretty as possible in normal table, column, and header format. However, there are times that you might want to use different things such as the line capability. Um, line will basically return each row out of a uh, response from a table, and then each column is basically put onto a new line. So let's look at what that looks like. So you may ask why you want to do this. Um, there are some tables that basically output only one row. Uh, like the uptime table, and sometimes it's easier to read them, especially if some of the fields are long if you do this in the line format. Um, this is going to lead us to the first thing that we're going to look at today. Um, so to start on Mac administration, I'd first like to talk about something called the system info table. Uh, if you're familiar with about this Mac on your Mac, the system info table does about the same on Mac OS. I'm not going to do select star from this because I don't want to share some of my personal information, such as my machine's name and serial number, but you'll get some ideas from this query and you can try this one at home. Basically what we're going to do is we're going to select a couple of columns with this and you'll see how this comes out with the line mode. So we're looking at the CPU type, subtype, brand, memory, etc. A bunch of the information you would get from about this Mac memo and it's going to come formatted in a nice little list here. Uh, this can be used to do inventory uh, and again it will actually show the serial number so you can track unique Macs this way if you want to. Um, this can basically be used also on Linux and other operating systems as well. Again, I'm just doing this on Mac OS because that's what I have available. Another thing in the about this Mac that is usually of interest is the amount of storage left on a hard disk. Let's see how you would do that with OS Query. There's a table in OS Query called mounts which lists all the file mounts. So we're going to go back to the pretty mode first and then we're going to look at that table. And like a lot of other tables in OS Query, initially we're going to see a fair bit of information and we're going to look at how we can refine this to get just what you need. So, yep, got a lot of stuff there. Uh, really, and we're interested in where the root mount is, which is going to be this particular device. So let's clean this up a little bit. And also let's look at this, the stuff that we're concerned about. We want to know the file type and maybe like how much space is left on the disk. So let's grab a few columns here that might be useful. Um, select path type and blocks available from mounts. And we're going to look for just the one which is the root path. So we're going to do where path equals just the root slash. Let's see if that works. OK, look, so we basically have the path, the type of drive, the number of blocks available. However, blocks available is not terribly human friendly. But again, remember, we've got the power of SQL so that we can try using the actual expressions in SQL and do some math and make this a little bit more readable. So let's take what we had before and let's change this blocks available a little bit. Um, so up here we have the block size in bytes as well as the blocks. So SQL allows us to do a bunch of functions, including some math. So Let's change our select so it's not just blocks available, but it's blocks available multiplied by the number by the number that is in block size. What this is going to do is for when it matches the where, it's going to look at the block size and multiply that times the blocks. So you should get the total number of bytes free. Okay, that's pretty cool. Um, and we can go and rename that.
but that's still you know a little bit awkward that's not necessarily what we want so we'll do a little bit more math we're going to change this so that we'll actually instead of using this as bytes we can look this as gigabytes and we can also reformat the number so i'm going to do a couple of things here i am going to there's a function in sqlite called round which basically uh, takes a number well actually i'll go ahead and do the math first and i'll show you so we're currently in bytes um, i will just assume for the sake that a gigabyte is a one followed by a set of zeros bytes as opposed to trying to do uh, one, two to the power of something. I think that's what Apple uses these days as well. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a little more math and instead of dividing by a billion, we're gonna do exponential notation. And this should give us the number. So we're basically doing times 10 to the minus 10th. And there you go, except we need to rename that and clean that up. So let's do a couple more things here. Uh, SQL, as I mentioned slightly before, uh, has a round function. So let's use the round function. And what this does is it takes the first number, which we just created, and then you're able to say stop after a certain number of significant digits. So we're going to say two, because we only want to see two past the decimal place. And we're going to change bytes free to gigs free. And hey, look, you've got kind of a neat little report showing what the direct, root directory is, what type of file system it is, and how many gigs are free. So another common thing that is often done for disk administration, especially if you're checking on your laptops, is you want to be able to see uh, if your disks are encrypted. Fortunately, OS Query has a table for that too. And again, a lot of information. You're gonna say, hey, a lot of those aren't encrypted. Most of these are virtual devices. The actual real disk drive itself right there, that one is encrypted. Um, so how do we pull this all together? Well, you'll notice that we have a name here, uh, which is showing the thing which was the, uh, I believe, partition earlier or device earlier. Um, so what we can do is we can basically do a similar query here So we can get just the information that we need. Um, and then I'm gonna do a little bit of cooking show magic, but we can take the query that we had before and we can join these two together. So we can also not only see how many gigs are free, but whether the partition is encrypted and what type of encryption it's using, et cetera. So this is the join. I'm basically taking the information that was from the mounts, joining it with some of the information on the disk encryption and running that together, hey look. So we basically got an ability to do a report that shows what our main file partition is, what type of file uh, partition it is, how many gigs free we have, and whether it's encrypted or not. And if it is encrypted, what type of encryption it's using. And again, if you do this at scale, you can basically survey all the Macs that are in your fleet and be able to tell what's going on with all of them um, just with this one simple command. All right. So another thing that we sometimes wanna look at is processes. You wanna see if a process is taking up uh, too much memory, too much processor, or you may wanna see the processes that are routinely taking up a lot of memory or a lot of processor. Um, so conveniently enough, OS Query has a processes table. So I'm gonna just grab a few out of this because this is another very noisy table. And again, we're gonna go through and we're gonna show how we can refine this. So this is very akin to using the PS command, except that you have the ability to shape it through SQL rather than have it remember all the command flags. And this again looks very messy right now. So let's clean this up a little bit. Um, so we don't want all the pieces here, but we wanna basically know like what process is running. And let's say we are trying to figure out how much processor time it's using. Let's see that we wanna see the process that are using the most processor time. So normally you'd have to do a lot of magic with PS or you'd have to run top and do a bunch of other commands. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use SQL here to grab this out of the processes table. So what we're doing here is we're getting the PID, which is the number, 
the process ID, um, the name of the process, and how much processor time, both in user mode and system mode, it's using. And say it's concerned about the one that's using the most system time. So we're going to do order by system time descending. That's going to say look at the highest one and count down. And let's limit this to five right now, just for ease of sake and not filling up the whole screen. And hey, look, so you've got a bunch of processes there and you can see ordered by system time, which one has been taking up the most processor uh, since my machine has started. Uh, obviously, we could change this if we wanted to do instead user time. We could do that as well and you get slightly different results. Um, but let's say you actually want to see what's taking the most process overall. Well, again, you have the ability of using uh, functions in SQL. Uh, what we can do is we can basically have our sort order be user time added to system If I did that without typoing, that is basically going to sort by the combination of the two. And sure enough, you can see it's slightly different. Um, the core audio D was basically not even showing up on this one. And yet when you add them all together, uh, it basically comes in as the second largest user of uh, time, mainly because the system time number is so high. Um, so you could also do this for a bunch of other facets. Uh, you can also look at memory size. Uh, so let's take this same idea and change a few things around in it. Actually, I'm just going to go and start from scratch. Total size is the total memory size in the system, uh, both in RAM and on disk. And again, we're going to order it by that memory count, and we're going to do it descending, so counting from the largest one down, and we'll be able to see what the uh, memory hogs in my system are. And we can see that Google Chrome is currently uh, taking up the top slots. Um, and again, we can take the sort of math we did from earlier. That's a kind of awkward number. Let's say we want to make this a little bit more digestible. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that total size and use the round and some math to sort of make this more human possible. So we're basically going to divide this or multiply it by a 10 to the negative power, which is the same as division, to get the number in megabytes. And then we're going to round that off to two significant digits. And we're going to call that as mem in eggs. And there we go. We basically have a nice little listing of the top processes that are taking the most amount of memory on my box right now and the amount of memory in megs that they are using. Another feature that you might want to know is who's currently logged into your machine. Um, on a desktop, this is not necessarily as critical as a server, but you definitely do want to know if a new user pops up and is doing something that you don't expect to be there. Uh, conveniently, OS Query has a logged in users table. So let's take a look at that real quick. And you're like, wow, that's got a whole lot of sessions in there. Well, honestly, what this is, is this is basically a bunch of sessions that I have used before and then closed out and I haven't rebooted my box and so they're still there. So I'm gonna go ahead and open a new terminal session. Um, so that's gonna be another effectively login on my machine. And you can't really see it in here, but let's go ahead and refine this one a little bit. And that's gonna narrow it down to the things that are basically available and active right now as opposed to all those dead ones I have knocking around. Um, if you happen to be doing this on a server or you're doing this on your local desktop and somebody's logged in remotely, the host column will actually show where the remote connection is coming from. Um, right now, because these are all local logins, either on the desktop or in a terminal session, you're not seeing anything remote because I'm logged in locally to the box. So one last thing to cover uh, in terms of administrative tasks for the purpose of this video um, a lot of times administrators commonly need to look at what's on a piece of software. 
And a lot of times you might have some scan that's involved or some inventory control software that's bulky to use and you just wanna check a particular thing, either for a user or concern about something being vulnerable. Um, and OS Query allows you to do this on the fly in a custom way. And in other videos, we'll talk about how you can check application versions at scale on MOS with OS Query, but I just wanna show quickly how you can do a spot check and how this could be useful. Um, so one of the things that you can do on a Mac is you can look at any of the installed apps with the apps table. So let's look at this again real quick. And I'm just gonna limit this again because this could show a lot of information, send it scrolling off the screen. Yep, that's a lot of stuff there. In fact, even just three basically push stuff off there. Like, okay, how do we clear this up? Well, let's say, you know, that Chrome browser that's using up all that memory earlier I want to make sure that I have the latest version of that. So I can do, and there are a bunch of different fields we could go on, but there is a base name field. As you can see up here, the first thing there, this is the name of the app itself. Um, we're gonna say, we don't exactly know, maybe it's Google Chrome.app or whatever. We definitely know it'll have Chrome in it. Let's see what we get when we just do this. So I'm gonna use the like operator, which allows us to basically look for the Chrome string with some wild cards. and we'll see what we get. And hey, look, you know, there's the Google Chrome app that we were looking for. Um, so let's clean this up a little bit. So let's do, and I'm gonna do bundle version from apps where name, like, And we get an interesting response. So here's one of the things, initially when you're first learning stuff in OS Query, uh, you will find that you get different pieces of things from different vendors, because they don't always follow the same convention. So if I pull up my Google Chrome right now, you'll see that this version number looks a tad bit different than what we have here in OS Query. Let me pull this up so you can see them at the same time. And what's ironic is this, even though it's called the bundle version, is actually the short bundle version is longer and actually has the entire distribution name than just the bundle version. So if you're doing this specifically for Chrome to do a report on Chrome, you would basically want to rewrite this so you're looking for the bundle short version. And I'll just do both so you can see them side by side. And there you can see Google Chrome bundle short version and that's actually what the version number for the entire build of Chrome is. Well, ironically, the just bundle version, the shorter one, is just this specific build number here. Okay, so we've covered several things today about how OS Query can be used for some basic administration tasks on Mac OS. Um, and again, I've showed you a bunch of things you can do locally on a machine, but remember these can all be done at scale with the right infrastructure in the background. Um, we've covered the help command to change the mode as to how the screen looks by using the mode command to go between pretty and line output modes. Um, we looked at how you can pull things up in the system info table, um, which gives you the equivalent of some of the stuff in the about this Mac on the desktop. We've also looked at how you can look at the disk mounts and see how much space is left on a drive and ways of formatting that and making that better to look at. We've also shown how you can see if a drive is encrypted or not. We've showed how you can look at the current running processes and sort them in a bunch of different ways, including looking at the ones which have the top amount of processor or RAM utilization. We've shown how you can see what, lo what users are currently logged into your machine. And we've also shown you a quick way to go ahead and try and check what software is installed. This is just a few of the different things that you can do for administration tasks in OS Query, but I hope the information included here will give you some inspiration in trying other ways you can use OS Query on your own. And you can see the flexibility of how OS Query plus SQL can ask you to ask questions and get answers easily. Thank you for listening, and I hope you tune in for future videos.